Hi guys and welcome in the fourth video of this new playlist, the Scientific Backtesting Guide. In this video, we'll focus on the walk forward optimization. And again, as for all the videos of this playlist, you will find an associate blog post in the link in the description if you prefer to read it or if you prefer just to take a look to be sure that you have understood all the things that I want to explain you in this video because I will not explain the same thing using the same way in the article and in the video. So you can take a look to both. It will help you to understand better this method. And this video, as the whole playlist, is sponsorized by the AlphaCon program, a quant trading community that combines e-learning videos, 7 day of a 7 support, and real-life quant trading monthly projects. So if you are interested by taking your quant trading in the next level, just take a look in the description. So the first thing to know is why we will use the walk forward optimization. In the previous videos, we have talked about the standard backtest, but we never do a standard backtest because it's too easy and it's not enough to really backtest our trading strategies. So we'll combine different methods and one of these methods is the walk forward optimization. Why we do that? Because first of all, we will not use only uh, in sample and out sample split will use several splits so it will reduce the variability problem and also we will backtest here not only the trading strategy but the way we will optimize the parameters dynamically of this trading strategy over the time so it means that when you will put this trading strategy in live trading we have backtested the parameters the trading strategy but also the way we will upgrade these parameters, which is quite interesting instead of a simple backtest because with the simple backtest, once you have parameters, they are fixed until the end. So it's a very major point. So now let me explain you a bit how it works. So you know the in sample and the out sample differentiation. We have talked about that in the previous videos. The in sample is where you will optimize all the parameters and the out of sample is there, you will test, you will really do the back test. But if you are using only one in sample and only one out of sample, you will have several problems, a lucky randomness problem, a variability problem, and many others, okay? That's why one of the method that we will use is the walk forward optimization. Why? Because it brings us a lot of advantages. You have two ways to do a walk forward optimization. You can encode the beginning of the in sample at the beginning of the data set, okay? And then you go forward each time with the test set, with the out of sample test. Or in the other way, you can go forward with the out of sample and with the in sample for each sample. So each method has its advantages and it weaknesses. So if you uncalled or unencalled the in samples, so you need to adapt that with the training strategy you are backtesting. If it's a scalping method that needs to be adapted really, really fine to the current market condition, maybe you will use an unencalled method. Or if you have a huge database, if you are backtesting your trading strategy over, I don't know, 30 years, okay, or even 20 years, the unencoded method can be a good solution. But generally, I use the encoded method because I trade in low latency, so I don't have a lot of data. So taking into account the most data that I can is very interesting for me. But again, you need to adapt that to your trading strategy that you are using, to the models you are using, and so on. And by the way, if you want to have a Python template ready to use to apply that to your trading strategies, you can take a look to the AlphaCon program because you have all the templates of this backtesting process into it. So now let me give you a step-by-step -step walk forward optimization guide. First of all, you need to define the optimization parameters. So do you want to choose an uncalled or an unencalled walk forward optimization? How long will be your different in sample and out sample? So that's a subjective point exactly when we choose the in sample and the out of sample. But the advantage is that 
we'll have several here samples. So we'll reduce the impact of the variability problem. And by the way, here, I just give you an example with six in samples and out of samples, but you can take two, three, 10, 20. It depends on the number of trade you have, the number of data you have, and many other things. So for example, you have one year of data, even if I don't advise you to backtest on only one year, for sure, you will not take 50 samples, okay? That's obvious. When I use 10 years of data, I have between 10 and 15 samples, depending on the number of trades and the time frame I'm using. So you have to choose the method, uncalled or uncalled. You have to choose the length for the train set and the test set, so in sample, out sample. And you also have to choose an objective function. So because here, the walk forward optimization is an optimization. When you do an optimization, you need to have the data, the trading strategy and so on, but you need to have a criterion to say that this set of parameters is the best or this one. And this criterion is the objective function. Generally, to find the best parameters, we combine the return with the risk. So we can use the Colmore ratio, return over drawdown, the sharp ratio, return over volatility. But I don't advise you to only optimize using the returns or only optimize using the drawdown because you will have an unbalanced trading strategy. Maybe you will have an amazing return with a huge risk, but maybe if you have a too low drawdown, maybe the returns will not fit to your goal. So you need always to keep a balance between returns and risk. So as objective function, you can use the sharp ratio, calmer ratio, that's only example, but you can create your own criteria. The second step is to take the first in sample and to test all the different possibilities, okay? When you want to optimize something, you need to give a range of values that you want to optimize. So let's imagine that we want to optimize the SMA period and the RSI period, but you can apply the same thing to the stop loss threshold, take profit threshold for, I don't know, hyper parameters of a machine learning model. You can apply this method to all the thing you want, but to keep it simple, okay, we'll take something that all of you know and understand SMA period and RSI period. Let's say that we have these five uh, values for the SMA period and six values for the RSI, okay? We'll take all the different combinations, 10 with 10, 20 with 10, 30 with 10, 50 with 10, 60 with 10, etc. It will give us a lot of different combinations. We'll compute the criterion on the in sample for all the different combination, okay? And that's only for the first in sample that we do that, okay? For now, after we'll do the same on the others, but at this step, we do only that for the first in sample. Once we have the best parameters, so more precisely, the parameters associate to the best criterion, what we'll do is really simple. We take the best in sample parameters and we apply them to the out sample. So if we have as best parameters 60 and 13 here, from the first in sample, we'll apply these parameters to backtest on the out samples. Once we have done that, we'll do the same thing on the in sample number two. We'll take all the different parameters, find the best parameters, so the parameters associated to the best criterion, and we'll apply these parameters to the second out of sample. And we'll do like that for all the different samples. So the things, by the way, that I am doing, which is not necessary, it's optional, is I do an exponential moving average of the parameters. What does it mean? It means that not for the first one, because we have only one best parameters, but let's imagine for the last one here. I will take the best parameters from this one, this one, this one, and this one, and I will compute an exponential moving average because it allows us to take into account the previous best parameters because if we have a robust trading strategy, the parameters will not move so much. And the advantage is that let's imagine that 
here on the unknown call, we have a very different market conditions for the in sample number five, okay? It's not really possible on the uncalled method, but it's especially for the unencalled method. You need to take into account the best parameters from the different previous in sample to keep like a memory of these parameters, okay? And the advantage of using an exponential moving average instead of a standard moving average is that the latest values will have a huge weight in the moving average instead of a simple moving average that give the same weight to all the different parameters. So the last value will be taking into account more than the others, but you will still take the previous one into account. And it's very essential to do not have extreme parameters because of this in sample, for example, is only during the, I don't know, the COVID crisis or something like that, okay? So that's why I apply that, but it's really optional. So now you know how to code a work forward optimization. Let's talk about the benefits and the limitations of this method. So first of all, we'll have a longer out sample period. Even for that, it's amazing, okay? Because instead of having only, for example, this out sample, okay? Like for this one, for the standard backtesting, you will have a much longer out of sample period. And who means a longer out of sample period means that your backtesting is more reliable because you will have more trades. The second thing is that, as I said before, you will optimize the parameters, but also the method to optimize the parameters. Because if you are using the work fraud optimization, you always take the in sample to optimize the out sample. In sample, out sample, okay? And so it means that when you will be in live trading there, okay, you will take the in sample here to optimize the parameters that you will put in live trading. So these parameters will be closest than the reality than if you have used only a simple backtest. And much more important, once you will be there, for example, you will take the in sample here, number seven, to optimize the parameters in live trading. And so you will have the best parameters for each period. And we can do that because we have backtested this method through the work forward optimization, okay? We have not only backtest the parameters for each step, but also if we have a backtest, we have backtested the method used to optimize each parameter. And that's very interesting. And the last thing, which is quite obvious, is that we have more variability points. And if we have more variability points, it will reduce the risk of having a lucky randomness problem. But, but I insist on this point, we didn't do enough robustness tests to be sure that this backtest is reliable. This work forward optimization is not enough to have a reliable backtest. It's important to mention it. But the most advantage of the work forward optimization is the optimization of the method to optimize the parameter, is backtesting the strategy and backtesting in the same time the method to optimize the parameters. And so the limitations are pretty obvious. The first one, the biggest, is that we use only the historical path data, even if we create several paths, okay? So it means that in the next videos, we'll use several methods to generate data, to generate much more samples, also using historical data. But when I say much more, it is around 100, 200, etc. And the second is that you need a number of thread high enough to have something reliable. If you have 10 years of data, but you have only 10 threads, you can't say that your strategy is reliable, okay? If you are here, for example, in the in sample, and you have only two trades to optimize your parameters that should be the best, it's not enough. You need to have constantly a lot of trade over the period. So for example, 500 trades over 10 years is a very good start. And you need to adapt the size of the train period and the test period according also to this metric, the number of threads. So I hope you like this video. In the next video, we'll begin to talk about the robustness test. And if you have any question, feel free to ask it in 
the Discord forum or direct me in private message to me on LinkedIn and see you soon in the next video.